This is a Romy here. Welcome back to I would say Stranger Things. Nope. <laughs> Welcome back to Changelings. This is a strange thing in front of us. Watching us. It can't come inside, can it? Oh my god, can it? Can it? It was that that thing from the woods. It let out a strange gurgle but didn't move toward me. My brain had gone numb with fear, but I was trying to just think. Should I scream for help? Or or what? I wasn't sure. What could was screaming for help? What could any member of my family do to help? The spirit thing didn't move, neither did that. Neither did I. Oh man, I could really use one of those offensive spells Ali was going to teach me. What do I do? What do I do? Uh hi? <laughs> what? Well, I decided to say hi to it? My voice was trembling and I could barely speak out the words. No response, not that I expected it. Whatever it was, it didn't really seem like the talkative sort. More like the attack you and murder you sort. I was trying to remember how that felt. H how are you doing? I still didn't react in an invisible way. The stillness was making me antsy. It was better than being attacked, but I had the feeling it was sizing me up. All I could picture was a cat ready to pounce. I took an anxious step backwards and my heel coming down the barrier in the door. I hissed again, jerked my foot away as the one drawback to the barrier became quite clear. My exit was blocked. Not that I really wanted to run through the house chased by a ghost, but it did somewhat narrow the available options on how to handle this. Unless my gaze traveled toward the bathroom, I share with Spencer. Door is very slightly ajar. I edged that way, keeping my eyes on the ghost. So I, I see you invited yourself into my room. Wait, you're in my room? I thought you were just outside the window. But which is kind of rude, you know, and creepy. Not that I'm judging. Even if I get out of my room, there's nothing stopping that thing from following me. So how do I make it leave? My eyes went to my bedside table where I left the amulet Willow had given me. It was supposed to keep evil spirits away. Clearly, it didn't work on keeping this one out of my room, but I wondered if I would at least stop it from being able to touch me. Or maybe I had to actually be holding it for it to have any sort of effect. I had no idea. Maybe it didn't work for me at all. Fuck. I don't think it's gonna work. I think running the dispenser is better. Flee. <laughs> I couldn't chance it. I knew what this thing was going to do if it caught me. And I didn't even know how to work that amulet. I needed to get out of my room. The door to the bathroom opened and I heard a familiar voice. Chico, Spencer, help me! Why are you talking to your... Spencer, stay back. What? <laughs> the ghost thing didn't like the interruption. It rushed at me. Its black robes billowing out. I dove toward the bed for the amulet on the nightstand. My hand closed around it, and I spun around, staring to my, to my feet. The strange spirit was right there. Wait, get get close to Spencer too! I screamed and held one arm over my face as I lifted the amulet. Michiko! Cody wrapped around, and I was certain it was all over. Something blasted out from my hand. I had no idea what magic felt what magic felt like, but I, if I had to describe it, that's what I have said it was. A rush of warm air swirled around and pushing back the coat. I peeked under my arm. The ghost thing was curled over by the window, black smoke pouring off its hunched shape. I could chill the fuck out with the scream. It looked up at me and just screamed. A terrifying sound that resonated in my head. With a wail, it rushed at me again. I sat her backwards, still holding up the amulet. Get out! There was another blast of air and heat that sent the ghost flailing back toward the window again. The entire room shook as glass shattered. And the ghost sort of broke apart, blinking away and leaving only a few bits of charred remnants that looked vaguely like feathers. I stood there trying to catch my breath. Mother, what, the ghost is physical? Because it just shattered my glass. Oh my god, did I kill it? Michiko? I rode around and punched him. Idiot! He scowled and rubbed his shoulder. What was that for? I don't know, I just needed to hit something. Well, don't hit me, Michiko. Oh, fuck. Footsteps thundered on the stairs, and honestly, I was shocked they were just now making it up to my room. They burst in their seconds, eyes wide. Michiko, what's going on? Was that glass break? She stopped short when she saw the carnage. Her room was a complete mess. Glass everywhere. Feathers. Me. Spencer standing off to one side. Mom and Dad both stood there, alternating between the eyeing us and surveying the mess. It was Mom who found her voice first as she came toward me. What on earth happened? I saw a glimpse at Spencer in it as I furiously- There was a crow that broke into the window. There. Boom. There's my lie. <laughs> I stole a glimpse at Spencer as I fiercely tried to come up with an excuse. His face was white as sheets, and it didn't look like he was going to be any help explaining this. Um, or Raven! Or there's a Raven. 
Confusion flashed over Mom's face when I choked out the word. It, it was a huge bird. A raven, I think. It flew right through the window and was freaking out everywhere. Why are you just screaming? Well, I mean, a huge freaking bird was flapping around my room and scared me half to death. And Spencer rushed in when he heard the commotion. It really flew through the window? I motioned to the charred, charred feathery looking things all over the floor and the broken window as evidence. I mean... Dad approached the window, carefully navigating the broken glass. A raven, are you sure? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure, yeah. I mean, it was dark in my room. I don't know. It's a big bird. I mean, it was huge and black. Bigger than a crow for sure. That part at least was true. Ghost thing was definitely bigger than a crow. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm fine. What happened to it? We got it back out the window, finally. Are you sure it's not, it was a raven and not an owl? Does it even matter what kind of bird it was? Still a bird bursting through the window in the middle of the night. I, I heard something about a flock of swallows breaking windows at school today. Maybe something about the weather is affecting them? I shot him a grateful look for help and cover for me. Thank goodness. It's not like they'd believe him if he said it was a ghost. But it was still nice to have backup. Hopefully defaulting the same excuse the school had used would work in my favor. Maybe. We can discuss this in the morning. Shane, do we have something to put over the window? I think there's some plastic down in the basement. Hey, Chica, honey, will you be fine in here for the rest of the night if we cover the window? He glanced at the clock. It was just after three in the morning. I probably won't be able to sleep for the rest of the night. I guess. Let's get this mess cleaned up first. There are feathers everywhere. She started supervising the cleanup, and I didn't have much time to think about anything else. I didn't think I'd sleep more, but by the time I finally fell in my bed again, curled up with William's amulet pressed to my chest, I was tired enough that I dozed off for a while longer before my alarm went off. Morning was just slightly chaotic. Once everyone was awake, Mom wanted more details about what happened the night before. Which, who could blame her? I was honestly surprised I hadn't gotten a full interrogation the night before. In all honesty, I wasn't really an expert with making up lies on the spot, but I couldn't really dodge her questions. Especially not first thing in the morning. So you just heard it tapping on the glass? I sighed, rubbing my eyes as I refilled my coffee. It's too early for this. Yes, yes, as if someone gently rapping. Rapping at the window and not the chamber door, though. She gave me a disparaging look, apparently. Very not much appreciating having Poe semi quoted at her. What? She sighed, giving the coffee cup a disapproving glare. It's still a bit hard to believe. What could cause a bird to just fly into the window like that? I'm not a bird behaviorist, unfortunately. And there were so many feathers. What on earth did you two do to that poor thing? I mean, we were trying to get it out the room without hurting it. It was freaking out. We maybe accidentally had feathers fall out of it. I don't know. I was just glad I talked to her talked her into letting me clean up so clean that up so she never realized that those weren't exactly feathers. Whose side are you on anyway? What would that make sense? Why would that Okay. Hey, whose side are you on? I mean, I picked that choice because I didn't know what that meant. I was just instantly sleeping when some crazy bird decided to go all hitchhawk, hitchcock on me. I think I was entitled to defend myself. And I really needed to thank William for that amulet that let me fight off that evil bird that attacked. I don't know. I kind of select my choice of just running into... Um, maybe we have to pick the William one because maybe that will help us boost William's chart. Shit. I didn't even think about that. I guess. I caught a slight movement from the intruder. It was advancing slowly. I just didn't know if I could barely see it. Whoa, whoa! I flew slightly, still too far to make casual dive for the amulet. Just, just, just calm down! I cut my eyes on the figure as I inch closer to the nightstand. Never in my life I thought I'd be in the situation where I was trying to t talk down a freaking ghost from attacking me. I really wish I had William's expertise of spirits or Guess's ability to beat them up. If I can just distract it for a few minutes. I really don't know what your problem with me is, but I'm sure we can work it out. The edge of the torn rope thing fluttering slightly as it moved toward me a little faster, panicking held up my hands. Wait, just stop! I mean, there's no reason for you to attack me, right? Almost there. We, we could talk it out, right? Just maybe over coffee or something out of the shop. The door to the bathroom opened. I heard a familiar voice. Hey, Chico? Why are you talking to your... Spitzer, stay back! What's... Ghost thing didn't like the interruption. It just it rushed at me as its black robes billowing out. I dove toward the bed for the amulet on the nightstand. Why can't I skip? Okay. I assume that's okay. I don't know. Sorry, on anyway, mom, though. And I really need to thank William for that amulet. Okay, I already read that part. Ugh, William, things had ended t so terribly yesterday. We argued and then he had that panic attack in the hallway. I still had no idea what he what he when he slipped that amulet in my bag. But it had really saved my life. 
I owed him big time. That made the second time that in as many days that he saved my butt from certain doom. Honey, are you okay? No. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just really tired. In case you're wondering, being awakened by big feathery intruders in the middle of the night, I don't recommend it. Well, I'm just glad the two of you got out of your room without anyone being hurt. Yeah, well, Spencer didn't help that much. I give him a sidelong look. <laughs> look at my face. <laughs> he was poking at his feet while he listened, but he but glanced up when I said that. Things were weirder than ever between us, but I was definitely hoping to put all that to rest before the day was out. I wasn't entirely sure what was going through his head, given what all I knew he'd seen by this point. He saw the ghost. My phone chimed again. I picked it up, turning away from Mom. Allie? Everything okay there? Why? And he sort of texted me. He said there was some sort of commotion last night. Uh, yeah. There was, there was a thing that happened. A thing. Yes, a very large bird broke into my room last night. A bird? Yes, a big scary bird. You're worrying me. Sorry. What? I am? You chick of you can tear yourself away from the phone for just a few minutes? Sorry. I quickly locked the screen again and put it away. We we're just working out the details of this afternoon. Looks like she'll be able to drive me home. She was apologizing for not being able to drive me this morning. Well, Spencer's been driving you so much lately that your dad is thinking of easing the rest of his sentence. Oh, well, yay for Spencer. Anyway, I don't know how quickly we can get someone here to fix your bedroom window. Your dad's going to try to pull some strings and see if he can get someone here earlier and then the middle of the next week. Well, I can try to sleep over at Allie's this weekend. Oh, that's a good idea. I didn't know if Allie would be up for an unexpected guest, but it might be easier for our magic lesson if that was still on. I feel, I'd feel safer at her house than at mine, that was certain. That would be perfect. If I recall, you have a day off on Monday, so that'll give your father until Tuesday to get something sorted out with your window. Fally says yes, <laughs> as Fally would say no. Okay, that was true, normally, but with Sam Hain, I wasn't sure. Of course, Halloween is Sunday, maybe the two of you could stop by, that would be fun. I rolled my eyes. Mom, I don't think kids even go out trick-or-treating anymore, you know? Of course they do. I talked to the neighbor's association. They said there's a little event in the neighborhood for all the kids. Alright, Mom. <laughs> if Allie says yes, then I'll see what we can do, okay? Perfect. I drained the last uh, last of the coffee and rinsed the mug. Spencer, I'm ready whenever you are. I'll be a minute. I grabbed my things to head outside. Wondering why the crazier things got the more normal... Wait, wait, what? Wondering why the crazier things got the more normal my relationship with them felt? Oh, okay. It was going to be an interesting ride to school for sure. <laughs> I stepped outside and carefully glanced around, keeping my hand in my pocket firmly on the ambulance. I had never seen the ghost thing in broad daylight, but I wasn't taking chances. I didn't know if I killed it last night or it just ran off. I was hoping I'd never find out. There didn't seem to be anything suspicious lurking around, so I headed down the front steps. To my surprise, Allie's car pulled up in front of my house as I was putting my things in the car. What's she doing here? The driver's side door opened as she stepped out, her expression serious. I said I was going to ride with Spencer. I know, but I was worried. I did say I'd explain things as cool. I lack patience. I can see that. Hey, can you blame me considering all the craziness that's been going on? Um, no. Why would I say I'll blame her for something? What the hell? No, I guess not. Exactly. I mean, you're attacked by Big Bird? A Big Bird, thank you very much. Not the big bird of a guy in a yellow suit broke. <laughs> so if she was showing up in my room in the middle of the night, it would be a totally different problem. So it really was a bird? No. I glanced back at the house. Look, the short version is that the ghost thing from the woods showed up in my room. What? Yeah. Ellie glanced that toward my bedroom window. She frowned. Your window's broken. Yeah, that happened when I kicked it out. Look, I promise I'll explain at school. And ultimately, everyone is fine. Okay, okay, just don't scare me like that. Sorry, I didn't expect that my werewolf neighbor would have <laughs> never had amazing hearing. You know, you know, if I were you, I'd stop singing in the shower. I shoved her shoulder gently, lightly, not gently. I do not sing in the shower. That's what Dad does. Oh man, poor Danny. Yeah, Dad's pretty tone deaf. <laughs> well, you look like you're okay, so I guess I should be going. Wait, I should tell her about the sleepover. She paused and looked over my shoulder. Please don't strangle Spencer on the way to school. I would never try to strangle the person behind the wheel. I'll definitely wait until we've come to a complete stop. Very funny. I think he's going to handle a little K. I mean, at this point, he's already witnessed quite a lot. What's left to freak out about? Okay, I'll see you there. Be careful, okay? We will. She hopped in her car and waved as she drove off. When I looked back at the house, Spencer was already standing on the porch. What was that? Emergency meeting? Well, Allie was worried. Right, and Allie, she knows about all this, right? Yeah. I'll include that in the explanation of everything else, I promise. Another guy? 
Well, you heard what happened last night because werewolves have good hearing. What? He has good hearing? I mean, you saw a ghost in my bedroom, you're shocked by the existence of werewolves? Anyway, I'll explain that to you, come on. <laughs> so, you're telling me that on the second day of school, they made you join the Mysteries Club because they figured out you weren't a normal human. I hated having to admit that last part to him. That aligns so well with all his accusations. In the past couple of weeks, I'd gotten somewhat used to the idea, but hearing Spencer say it was uncomfortable to say the least. Yeah. And everyone in the club is some sort of non-human? Well, more or less. I mean, Allie and Corbin and some other are, some others are human. They just use magic. William Lee is human too. And what about you? We, we think I'm fae. Like a fairy? Yeah. We drove in silence for a minute. I sneaked a few sidelong looks at him, but he was just watching the road, his face expressionless. And this is where I'm going to save today because I only could squeeze in one more episode recording before Tyler comes home. So, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.